and welcome back to the show, show of Weighted Donuts. I'm Wayne Unger. My co-host is Craig Steer. And tonight we have a returning guest, ESPN.com columnist and stat guru, projection guru, Dan Zimborski. Welcome, Dan. Hey, guys. How you doing tonight? We're good, Dan. It's a thrill to uh, be speaking to you. Thanks for giving us some time. So, okay. Uh, okay, you know, Dan, I mean, you know, your, your thing is, uh, you, you know, uh, projections. It's not your only thing, but it's, it, it seems to be a big part of, uh, you know, of what I see. So, uh, I, I'm just curious, uh, a young gentleman, uh, pitcher with the Minnesota Twins had his debut today. It didn't go very well. Uh, did you do a projection for Jose Berrios before the season? Uh, yeah, I have a Berrios projection. Um, I can pull it up. Uh, uh, the projections did like Berrios, uh, but, I mean, the question is always if he's ready, and you never really know that with a young pitcher. Uh, he's, he's had three starts so far. They, they've been up and down. He's had some moments. He's, he struck out guys. He's had some command issues, but uh, he, he represents the most upside on the team. And so that's what makes him obviously the most interesting to the twins because the twins otherwise don't have a rotation with a whole lot of upside. Uh, Phil Hughes yeah. hasn't really clicked for a few years and everyone else has a bunch of really soft tossing pictures. Don't really, don't really just take command of the game. And that, that, that's one of their bigger problems. Uh, barriers coming into the season. Uh, I had him projected at about a, a ERA, a little over four. Zips was actually a fan of barriers. Had a roughly a league average picture, uh, but right now this is the Twins are so far, you know, out of contention. They're 13 games back. They can afford to to give him a chance to wet his feet a bit. Okay, yeah, he got. I mean, he got. I'm sorry. Yeah, he got killed today. He got killed today. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Craig. No, no, no. I, that's all very interesting. But I want to. I'd like to focus. I I, I read your your piece on the Cubs, and. Um, you know, looking at the first month of first month, six weeks of the baseball season, Dan, the Cubs have to be the good, the the, the good feel, the feel good story of the season so far, without a doubt. And uh, I liked your piece a lot, and I like, um, you know, I like where you're headed with all of that. And uh, I'm just wondering, piece by piece. Where do you see where do you see their strengths and where do you see their weaknesses? Because uh, I'm a Yankee fan, but I love the Cubs, and uh, it's it's a it's a thrilling prelude to you know you know what they've started here is really something else. So I'm just wondering where you see weaknesses, where you see their strengths, and uh, what do you foresee? I mean, I know uh, well, numbers wise, uh, I you know I I see that you you know statistically speaking. Uh, you know, there's a you know there's a, there's a decent probability they're going to win 100 games and whatnot. But uh, tell me what you think. Uh, well, well, one thing about the Cubs is anytime you start off 27 and nine, you're a pretty good team. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Teams don't luck into going 27 and nine. Simply put, uh, I, I I picked the Cubs to win the World Series before the season for ESPN magazine. And I wrote a bit at the time that there's always this kind of initial sense of fear. When you've picked the Cubs to win the World Series, you think, <laughs> Absolutely. oh, right. if I'm going to be right, the Cubs have to win the World Series. Uh, <laughs> it, it's unusual when they're a feel-good story. They've had a tendency to be a feel-bad story. Uh, as weaknesses go, there are not a ton of them. Uh, it would really be nice to have Kyle Schwarber in the lineup. Uh, uh, Solaire is, has, has not really clicked for the team all that well. So that's a weakness right now. And they, they need Jason Hayward to hit more than he has. Uh, Fowler, of course, has more than pulled his weight to kind of make up for some of those losses. But the outfield, it's it's not all together yet. Uh, and that's probably the team's biggest weakness now. Uh, it's usually hard to find a lot of obvious weaknesses for a team. You know, that's winning games like like they are. Maybe they could use another uh, arm at the back of the bullpen, but that's probably, you know, small potatoes. Uh, it's a good team. Obviously, nothing's guaranteed. I think the odds of a team winning the World Series, even the best of circumstances, probably top off around 25%. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
when you when you're twenty five percent likely to do something, more likely than not, it's not going to happen, which probably isn't what Cubs fans want to hear. Right. My daughter is in uh, is is in <clears throat> the Midwest. She just finished her freshman year in college, and she reports that the in the Milwaukee newspapers there's a rumor that um, Ryan Bo- Ryan Braun is on on the uh, trading block. And the Cubs are giving that some thought. Is there any way in the world that could you could see that foresee that happening? They could, uh, but I don't think I don't, it's, it's always hard to tell because when you trade a player, it doesn't really come down whether whether it's a good fit so much as what the price is. There's always a price that a player you don't want to acquire a player at. There's always a price you do want to acquire a player at. Uh, the Brewers, of course, it's, it's in their interest to trade Braun. Uh, he's 32 years old. Um, he, he signed for a while. And the team it's not gonna, the team's not going to be good for a while. They're realistic about their position. So you do see a fit for a contending team that can use a corner outfielder like the Cubs. Uh, but the, 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 the question is the price. Uh, essentially, he's owed, when you take into account the guarantees, he's owed like $90, $95 million. Uh, now, the Cubs, if he were a free agent, might be willing to give him, say, a four-year $95 million deal. But I don't know if they'd be willing to pay handsomely for the privilege of, of, of giving him that deal. And... When you're 27 and nine, and you already have an eight-game lead in May, there's not that same emergency situation. They they have a, a room for error. So even if the Brewers trade Braun, there's probably better homes for him than Chicago. Uh, I would probably look more to a team that is having trouble with offense and is actually close to the division as opposed to running away with it. Uh, so it, it could happen. I'm not really sure. I see it, Chicago. I wonder if the Yankees would be interested in a guy like Braun. And the Yankees are hard to figure out simply because they, they've they always had so much money, but they haven't really been all that active with their money in no. recent years. Essentially, uh, they've had one – they signed, like, one significant free agent in the last couple of years, uh, and really they did nothing in the off season. So it's always hard to see where that would fit. Uh because I don't think they're ready to, to bench A-Rod when he's healthy again, uh, when, his, when he's back from his hammy. Uh, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't see that. I, I, don't, you see, I see, you know, the Yankees is trying to, tr- you know, turn around uh, the way they've been doing business. I, I, you know, I mean, they were very successful pricing everybody out, and it worked for them for many years. That was their business model. They won. They drew fans in. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think they lost, uh, they lost their way a little bit uh, after around 2003, 2004, in the sense that uh, they were trying to put an all-star at every position. They were, try- they were trying to play rotisserie baseball, so to speak. And, uh, you, know, you, you know, I think they learned that you can't put a team together like that uh, you can't you can't ignore your farm system. So, they, you know they're like they're like caught in the middle. They they're trying to contend and they're trying to uh, get to some type of uh, financial uh, sanity, so to speak. I know, but and, having, uh, having said that, you know they'll be back in the game once once some once they shed some of these big contracts. You know when CC. But when but CC that will and, but. But that will, uh, you know, after next year, they're going to, you know, so if you take Teixeira, Beltran, uh, Sabathia, and A-Rod, if you take those those four contracts off the books, off the top of my head, I'm thinking 30, 20, 55, 75, that's like $90 million. So they don't have to spend, they don't have to add anywhere near $90 $90 million to their annual payroll to reinvest the money again toward talent and still take a significant chunk off, the, off of their uh, budget, off of the, you know, their payroll. But, uh, and I personally like that. I thought, I thought it was a big hiccup, you know, three years ago when they traded, when they, when they signed McCann, Ellsbury, and Beltran. I was, I was okay with taking it on a chin for another year or two and, and, and regrouping. Uh, that, that's just me. But uh, well, that, that's always the problem because in, in, when you're a New York team, especially if you're the Yankees, there's always that pressure to never just throw in the towel and retool a little bit. It's it, and it's hard to 
it's like any any army general can tell you it's hard if you're always having to fight nonstop if you can never regroup your forces. Uh, because what's always missed, a lot of people miss about the Yankees, is that the team in the early part of the 2000s that was successful, yeah, they, they spent a lot of money, but they also had a lot of homegrown players. I mean, you had Posada and Jeter and Soriano and Bernie Williams and Nick Johnson for a couple years and, and still Andy Pettit carrying over. Uh, and And that kind of thing, it makes it possible to add enough. Oh, and Mariano Rivera, obviously. But that kind of thing makes it possible to add payroll on top of that. Uh, their farm system looks better now than it has, uh, but there, there, there were many years where they weren't really developing all that much internally. And that's tough, because if you're not developing much internally, you, your, your payroll is just going to go up and up and up and up if you're going to continue to compete. Uh, and even the Yankees have limits. Even the Dodgers have limits now. Uh, they're not going to spend $300 million, probably. Uh, so they, they are in that kind of awkward position right now. Um, so it'll it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out over the next couple of years. So, uh, go ahead, Craig. No, go ahead. Uh, all right. So now, by the way, where did you uh, where did you have the Yankees pick this year, Dan? I had them um, third, I think. I actually had, I had the division so close. Uh, really, the American League, I mean, I had it very close. That I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly, like, I'm looking it up. I think I had them third. I think it was it was either second or third. I had it Boston, either Toronto or New York, then the other one, then Baltimore, then Tampa Bay. But I had something like eight wins between the, the top and the bottom team, kind of on average, simply because, as I know we talked about last time, the American League is so tightly packed in ability. There are no great teams in the American League. And there are really no absolutely horrible teams in the American League. Uh, I mean, the Twins had that awful start, but I think the Twins overall are probably better going forward uh, than, than the Reds or the Braves are. Uh, so the league's pretty close, and really anything could have happened in the AL East, and anything still could happen. It's, it's still early. Well, what do you well, see in okay. what, 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 When you look at the Red Sox, what do you see there? Well, when they signed David Price, which is a big deal, uh, and they do have enough frontline talent that that could that that could move well. Mookie Betts, they have one last year. David Ortiz, Sandra Bogart, Dustin Petroia, still a very competent player. Uh, I was a fan of Porcello's bouncing back a bit. Uh, they they did get Kimberly, even if they overpaid. He is a, a really good reliever. Um, but really, I had them essentially slightly better than a very ordinary division. I didn't have the Red Sox as a great team, and I still don't think they're a great team. I don't think any team in the AL is a great team, uh, as, I, as I noted. Uh, you, you probably could have convinced me that any team could have. I could have made any, a case for any team in the division. Really, any team in, in the American League has a non, had a non-crazy argument for the playoffs. Uh, and so I, I think there's a lot of sameness going in. Uh, but you see, I, you have to look I at agree with chances. you. I agree with you. I, and I'm a Yankee fan, and the, really the only team that I saw not having a great chance was the Yankees because I just didn't buy their offense. The same way I don't, I don't, I still don't buy the Red Sox pitching. I, I, the Red Sox offense has been fantastic. I, I, I realize that. Um, uh, I just. I just don't see the I just don't see the Yankees coming around. They they they're just too old. I just yeah, they're in a tough position. Wait, wait I, I'm yeah. sorry. No, I, I Wayne will probably uh, debate that till he's blue in the face. Um, I, I thought no, the Yankees no. had enough had enough that they could put it together uh, because even if if the aging of the team made it so that a disaster could happen fairly quickly, there were enough pieces there that could work out. Uh, to make it interesting, like Severino should have been better than he is. Um, yeah, that's a real, that's a real, real shocking. Uh, to me, that's a real shocking. Yeah, he was, I saw he was so good he, last year. Yeah. Uh, Chase Headley should have been better than he is. I, I didn't. I, I was a little disappointed by last year, but he should be at least at last year's level, which was not horrible. But this year, I mean, he's had he's been pretty awful. Uh, so they, they've had some things go wrong unexpectedly. Uh, but it, it could have happened. It's just. It's, it's it's more difficult than it was a month ago, I think. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I felt as though the Yankees, uh, I felt as though as long as they were healthy, I didn't think there would be a question about their offense. And uh, and actually, when they, when their offense was at its worst, they weren't 
they actually weren't so, uh, you know, they weren't so injured. I mean, now, you know, Ellsbury's been hurt, and you've got A-Rod on the DL, uh, you know, they and they lost, uh, oh, the, 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 Greg Bird. Uh, you know, I mean, and no, and no, listen, no one expected Hedley to be as bad as, he, as he's been. Uh, but you know, if you look if you look at the way they've been playing the past couple of weeks, Hedley's been hitting better. Uh, Aaron Hicks has been hitting better. He's been picking it up. Uh, McCann has been hitting good. Beltran's been hitting good. So you know, they're, they're looking a little better. But I, I, I tell you what, I'm gonna I give I remember my picks at the beginning of the year. I had Toronto, Detroit, and Houston winning the divisions. I had Texas. And the Yankees as wild cards. I had Washington, Chicago, and the Giants winning their divisions, and I had the Mets and the Cardinals as wild cards. And okay, and I'm and I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. I said the Cubs were not going to win the World Series, and uh, and I and I there was and I kind of just had a certain feeling about Tampa Bay being a surprise team. But uh, certain things have not gone the way I expected. So, uh, uh, but it's it's still, you know, it's still kind of early. We're still maybe around 20% into the season. Yeah, no team so. is really out of it yet. Uh, some teams obviously have more of an uphill struggle than others. Uh, the Twins are probably out of it. They're 13 games back. They're probably not going to win a wild card. Uh, you can probably mentally cross off the Twins. But the Yankees are seven back. The Rays are, what, six, six and a half back, somewhere around there. And uh, that, that, that makes their challenge tougher than it was at the start of the season, but still possible, simply because there's no team that's good enough that you expect them to just go nuts like the Cubs have. Now, who, who has come out what, – what player – what player has come out of nowhere, or what few players have just come out of nowhere for you, like, that way, like you, will, you know, you say to yourself, "Wow, I didn't see that coming." Can, can does it do any pop into your head? Well, I, I, I always liked Vincent Velasquez. I didn't see him being this good this quickly. Uh, that surprised me. I mean, he, he, he hasn't obviously kept up his scoreless streak, but he's been really damn good for the Phillies. Uh, and it, it's impressive him and, and and Aaron Nola just to really been just a big part of why the Phillies just haven't stunk this year. Uh, I still think they're going to fall back to the pack because the offense is a complete joke. Uh, but but I've been really impressed by both those pictures. And I hate to keep bringing up Red Sox, but I didn't think Travis Shaw. I, I still think he'll fall back to earth to a degree, but he's been better than I – he kept that up better than I expected. I mean, he's a guy who didn't really hit all that well in the minors. I always said, well, you know, he'll he'll fall back a bit. But he's been really good. Now I can say, yeah, he has a high batting average of balls in play. But still, the fact is – He's been a lot better than I thought he'd be. So I can't completely poo-poo that. What about on the flop and side? Are there, are, who can you identify? Uh, who you Well, the with? Astros. Uh, all the Astros. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, it, that's, it, that's a crazy situation. Yeah, uh, really except for Altuve, who's just been insane. Uh, but Carlos Gomez has just been terrible. Dallas Keuchel's been terrible. The whole rotation for them has just been absolutely terrible. They got Lance McCullers back, and he was he got bombed his first start. Uh, and the Astros, they have to have better pitching than this uh, because 15 and 24, they're not dead in the water uh, because really, I mean, they're seven games back, which isn't a disaster. But they need to get pitching soon, and if they don't, it's going to be an early end of season for them. You know what they need? They need they need Keiko to face the Yankees. Um, they just need <laughs> some of those guys because it's not like because it's not like there's anyone there that's been bad enough for a long enough period that you actually think about replacing them. You just want them to pitch better. It isn't like you're going to replace Keiko. You say, hey, just stop being terrible. What the hell? Why are you walking so much better? And how terrible are now, the Angels? Oh, the Angels. Uh, it's just it's. It's a difficult organization because they've always, in recent years, they've kind of been essentially an 80-win team that has Mike Trout. And right. and I always joke that, out of curiosity, how many wins a team with Mike Trout 
and eight guys that they just pick up off the street, like just random people. How good that team would do if they had Mike Trout. Uh, and if you look at some of the Angels' issues, that's, that's, that's kind of what they're going to. I mean, they lost Garrett Richards. Uh, uh, Heaney has a, might see the knife also. Uh, the, the offense has been just a mess outside of, of Trout. Uh, Pujols looks done. The infield's just been just terrible. Uh, they've lost Simmons for a while. It's it's not a good organization right now. Uh, they yeah, have so all that. So if you're Artie Moreno, Moreno, what do you do? I mean, you've you've got the you know you've got for lack of I don't know thing. what they can do. I think because their farm system is absolutely terrible. Uh, if the Angels didn't have Mike Trout. They could not trade their entire farm system for Mike Trout, <laughs> literally. They could say, we'll give you all 250 players for Mike Trout. He's like, no, no, that's not happening. That, that, that's the situation that, that the team is in. Uh, and and so they traded not- their top two prospects over, over the, you know, in the uh, Anderson Simmons trade. Yeah, o- I mean, over he's the- a good player, but the Angels' model right now is they have to win now. They, cause it's not like they can go out and get things. Uh, they don't have, you know, they don't have the trade things just to even acquire the players. All they can do is spend money, and spending money is pretty inefficient because one, you're it's an auction, and you never get you don't get a lot of great deals in an auction. And two, the quality of the free agency has has gone down in 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 the last ten fifteen years simply because teams that want to keep players and can afford it don't want to let them get to free agency. Uh, you you look at this year. If the Angels want to add a, a top-flight starting pitcher, essentially they have to get make a post for a Japanese player for Otani, or the best player is gone because Strasburg's already signed. You look at the free agent market this this off season, and there's nothing in the pitching department. Uh, so you don't. It's hard to see how the Angels will improve from this point. Uh, I mean, Jaime Garcia is probably the best pitcher available, and he has question marks. He's had a he has a terrible health history. I mean, he's had one full season essentially that he's been healthy in his career. Uh, I, the Angels they're they're in a really bad place. They're in a worse place than their record indicates. So, I mean, you say sixteen and twenty one, that's not the end of the world. But this team can't be at that point at this point of the season. Uh, so, I don't I don't know what's going to happen with them. So at what point, I mean, let, let's have some fun with this. So you get the best baseball player, arguably, uh, Mike Trout. I mean, how much longer is Mike Trout going to say, this is, I don't want to be in a situation like this? Because it really, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, it's not going to get any better for them uh, anytime soon. So let's just play around with this. Is does Do they shop Trout around? I mean, is that is that possible? I don't think they do. I don't think that I think I'm I'm a believer in that no player is untouchable. You always have to be willing to talk. You don't have to agree, but you have to be willing to talk, talk things out, look at, at scenarios, and sometimes things happen, and 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 two parties can come to an agreement. I think that the Angels are really at the point where they have to seriously start thinking about trading Trout, simply because they, I mean, he he makes more than a fair deal. He has a lot of value because he's an incredible player, and players like that don't become available that often. And he's he's the team's only, well, one of the team's few assets that they have. And I don't think they can win now, and so they're going to have to win later. And how do you win later without a farm system? I think Trout kind of has to be that first uh, that first trade to start restocking your system. Uh, but the question is how much, because the price has to be super high for Trout. You don't give Trout away for, for two prospects and a throw-in. Uh, no, so not. it's a question is, does anybody have enough to trade for Trout? It was just kind of an interesting thought experiment. No, I, I think, uh, it's, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's a thrilling uh, thing to think about. Because you could, you really, you, you, at bare minimum, you'd, be, you'd, you'd want five ball players, you know, who can step in and start playing, right? I mean, yeah. Oh, I just saw Garrett Richards is actually skipping Tommy John surgery for now. Yeah, uh, I was a liar when I said that for now. I don't, I don't think it'll end well because usually rehabbing a torn UCL doesn't have a really great track record. 
Uh, I remember when Todd Stottlemyre some years ago, if you remember Stottlemyre, he had a tour in UCL. He, he wanted to go the rest and rehab route. And instead, he ended up changing his delivery and then messed up his shoulder, and that was the end of Todd Stottlemyre. Uh, so so he, I, I still think he'll end up hitting surgery eventually. I remember when Matt Harvey didn't want surgery, but uh, but we'll see. Uh, it might be better, considering where the Angels are, they just have that taken care of now. Well, that's yeah, and the report, said, the, the report said that his tear uh, was worse, you know, was, was a pretty good-sized tear. Uh, you know, Tanaka is, is so far has stayed off surgery, but he also has a partial tear. But, but they said, uh, Richard's tear was, was considerable and, you know, so, and, and eventually, you know, he, he will. He will end, he will end up. Yeah. I think, I mean, uh, they're just Tanaka trying to stop the season. Uh, I mean, Tanaka survived so far, but you can't tell me that that elbow is, ne- isn't always in the back of your mind thinking about it. Oh, I think it's every, in the back of every, every, every Yankee bitch. fan's mind. <laughs> every bitch. Yes, like, oh, God, this better, this better be the one. You just, you just know at some point he's going to throw something, that's, and he's going to stand there, that's, and he's going to... That's why I him. said so far. <laughs> yeah. So. The, yeah. Dan, you brought, that, you, brought yeah. up, you brought up Harvey. Are you bullish or bearish on, on Harvey? I, I, I always try to be bullish on talent, but I'm kind of worried about Harvey. Uh, he, he hasn't looked like Harvey, and and the and the truth is that players have had it's it's not un, I mean Tommy John surgery is a very successful surgery, especially when you compare it to say rotator cuff surgery, which still has kind of a crappy track record. Uh, but Harvey, his 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 he's lost a couple of miles prior on his fastball since last year, and that kind of worries me because he threw a lot of innings last year. Uh, when you add in the playoffs. And I know that there were jokes about protecting Matt Harvey, but pitching is a pretty disastrous thing for anybody's arm. Uh, so so I, I am a bit worried about Harvey. Uh, his peripheral stats aren't as bad as his ERA, but I am worried that he that he's lost some speed on his fastball. Uh, well, should we take yeah, a look we'll at Stras- someone like Strasburg and say, okay, so – you know, it took him three years to, to become the you know to to get back to where he was when you know prior to his prior to his injury. Do we give Harvey another another year or two and say, okay, you know, whatever we're getting out of him now, you know, he's only going to get better, he's only going to get stronger, or you know, is there some sort of minor handwriting on the wall or something? I think you keep pitching him because. It's not like you could trade him for a bunch of prospects with this uncertainty around him. I think right. it's in the Mets' interest to just see what happens. Uh, even if it's not good, they have, they have to see what happens. Uh, the Nationals, uh, they, 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 they kept giving Steven Strasburg chips. I mean, it wasn't like he was bad, but he's gone to the next level this season. I, I, I mean, I'm still positive about Harvey's future. I'm just worried that there's something wrong with his arm because, I mean, we've seen some of these guys. I think of Dan Hudson who rehabbed his Tommy John surgery, you know, came back from it, and then a few innings into his recovery had to have another Tommy John surgery. And it would really suck if, if Harvey had to have another one. Uh, but crossing my fingers for now. And speaking of uh, another Met pitcher, what about uh, Jake DeGrom? Yeah, Jake DeGrom, it's, it's another problem. Uh, I mean, the Mets rotation, you wanted to see them better than this. Uh but Degrom, I mean, he's good. His strikeout rate is just worrying, though. You know what I mean? Of course. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, so I, I, do I like Degrom. Do you think also, you know, the you know the innings took a toll on him as well? He's also a time, he's also uh, had Tommy John surgery, is uh, I believe in college. You, I think you're right. I'm not positive though. Uh, but I mean, the ground. I mean, he's actually. I mean, he's pitched fine. But you you worry about the strikeouts. You worry about the velocity loss uh, because really players can be successful throwing ninety two or ninety three. But when a player is throwing ninety five, ninety six, and is now throwing ninety two, ninety three, that's a gigantic worry. Uh, and it, it's not what you want to see because I mean, I'm not a Mets fan, but I'm a fan of baseball. And a young rotation like that is really good for baseball. It's a cool thing. I love to watch the Mets rotation. I love to watch Noah Syndergaard pitch. Uh, I just wish that, that everything had clicked together. 
I am happy about Steven Matz because people freaked out after that first start. And I'm telling people, don't freak out about one start. Right. What the hell, people? And he's been fine. He's been what? Well, awesome. well, well, you know what? One one New York columnist, you know, right after his yeah. first start, said, yeah, so send him down. back to the farm. That. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Talk to his scout. Like, oh, he, he should be in the farm system right now. Uh, I, I, I express disdain for that idea on Twitter because people panic. Even people who should know better can panic. Yeah, well, uh, it's funny. There was something over the weekend in the L.A. Times that Yaziel Tweed needed to be sent down. <laughs> even, though, even though you couldn't send – I don't believe you, uh, you, can se- you could send him down anyway without his permission right now. But, uh, yeah, he had you know, too much that, yeah, yeah he, but he, that was suggested like in a column as well. Yeah, people, people, people panic about things. I mean, Puig, he had a hot start for like the first week of the season, and since then he just hasn't hit at all. Um, it's it, 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 the Dodgers need him to hit, and the thing is, I don't know if they really have another option than waiting for Puig to hit. It's not like they're a few, full of great outfield options. It's just meh. Uh, but it, it's interesting. Certain players end up getting a lot of headlines because I have to admit all the people complaining about say Yasiel Puig's bat flips that makes me like him more because the people that are like oh he bat flips I hate him you know you know the people yeah. of course well that's that's, yeah. that's that's a good that's a good segue into the uh the big brawl yesterday in Toronto oh the brawl yeah people gotta I Prince Fielder has been terrible this year, but I give him credit because he did not escalate the situation where it could have gone. Because sure. when he got hit, if, if it had been a different player, it very well could have been another brawl. But yep, you're absolutely right. But he he, he showed, uh, and he's of, probably not the player I would pick to hit. <laughs> no, that's that's like a free base for him. It's like, oh, I'll take that. <laughs> but what's your take on all this? I, I thought it was. I thought it was so interesting today that the whole discussion about if you're going to hit a guy, you know, f- you know, based on what he did last year in the playoffs, you know, why wait until the last, you know, at the last at bat, uh, you know, for the season against these guys, for the regular season. I mean, they're done playing each other. Uh, because they, really because gotta, that's I, it. They wanted it because they wanted it to end yesterday. It was like that's it. Let's let's do what we got to do, and we don't have and. And they, you know, so it doesn't go on and on and on. That's probably why they waited till yesterday. It was the last time that they were going to play, and which brings brings uh, uh, to light. Uh, you have to wonder uh, what's going to happen with Chase Utley and the New York Mets the next the next series they play because that will be their last series of the season as well. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the whole retaliation thing because <laughs> when, you re, when, when you retaliate, I mean. Things got out of control that way until someone gets seriously hurt. I was extremely annoyed uh, when when uh, Carlos Quintin, uh, you know, broke Zach Granke's collarbone uh, and got eight games for that. Uh, you know, charging the mound and he broke a collarbone. I'm like, come on, an eight game thing? If you had a football player who attacked the opposing team's quarterback in the huddle, he would be suspended for more than than. One one twentieth of his season. I mean, it, it, if a, if a linebacker just charged Peyton Manning while he's in the huddle and broke his collarbone, he's gonna be gone for the year probably. Yeah. Uh, I mean, these guys must be adults. I mean, I played sports as a kid too. Um, I was never a professional, I mean, but I, I I did play sports up through high school. And you know, sometimes you had to be an adult about things. And I think a lot of times there's this kind of enabling where where they just you know just just wave away like brawls and stuff in baseball. Like it's just they're just working things out instead of cracking down on it. I think that it, it's not healthy for the game uh, to have that. Well, but the, the baseball would have to do a better job if they really care about it. I don't think they even really care all that much about the issue. Someone's gonna have to get seriously hurt, like had their career end or be paralyzed before baseball does anything. You're probably right. That was some. That was some. Some punch that uh, he took. Oh yeah, as a, as someone who's watching, I mean, I can, I can, I can have my Jeremiah's about the about the the violence in baseball, but it was still fun to see. I mean, I like MMA. Uh, uh, Odor is not a big I, player, so I it, it was. I thought I thought Beltre did a really great job getting in there, you know, and 
you know, bear hugging him so he he wouldn't go crazy because Bautista could have gone. I mean, he got he got popped pretty good. Yeah, and he he's not a little dude either. He's pretty no. solidly built. So Adore, it isn't like Adore was like beating up David Eckstein or something. Uh, uh, my my favorite and, one of all time was was I remember uh, 1995, I think, uh, the big Orioles Mariners brawl. But what happened in that one? Mike Mussina injured his arm in 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 the brawl and missed time on the DL. Uh, wasn't 1996? It was no, it was 1995. Well, one of the or no, know, it was no, it was 93. You know what it was? I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I got married a couple of weeks later. Check this, Scott. This is a, a true story. I was. I had got tickets to see the Orioles play for the first time in Camden Yards. And I was, you know, you want to see Cal Ripken play. The night before I was driving down from New York to see Cal Ripken play was it, was that brawl. And oh, he, so. he, he kind of got banged up, and there was a question whether or not he was going to play. So it was 90, it was 93. It okay, was June 93. of 93. Yep. And he ended up playing, but I know I remember the brawl you're talking about. Yeah, it it was a pretty big one. It, it lasted yeah. a while. They could get it. It took a while to get to get order in that game, uh, and and and, and of course the Orioles brawl. Wayne, you remember the Yankees and the the Orioles? Oh, of course. When 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 uh, when uh, what Benitez hit uh, Benitez, Gino Martinez. Right. Oh, and Dow Strawberry was like he was going around clocking people, but I'll never forget. Uh, like and he was playing for that, wasn't he? Yeah, but Le- Lenny Webster, Lenny Webster, Lenny Webster clocked him pretty good. I I remember, but uh, and and Graham Lloyd also jumped right into the fray. It was like you know he he was Graham Lloyd was right up front with that, but but that was Strawberry. Uh, you know he he did some damage before he, before he got clocked himself. So. Yeah. Um. And Graham Lloyd was a pretty big dude, too. Yeah. He, he was, was like eight yes, feet he was tall. <laughs> <laughs> the world's largest uh, Australian. He yeah. was pretty effective. He ended up being very effective during the playoff run. He, he, did, a, he did a nice job. He uh, did. But, uh, he, he, he endeared himself. But it's just, it's so, just funny imagining any kind of other workplace where things get heated the idea of, of, of there being a brawl that break, breaking out. Like, I mean, sports writers, we fight with each other all the time, but I can't imagine being at winter meetings and then a brawl breaks out. <laughs> like, oh, I'm pushing Craig Calcaterra in the face, and, and, and Jeff Passon is, like, knee me in the head, like, wait, how did this happen? Well, I mean, let me we don't tell you have something. I, and, and I work for Coca-Cola, and I have never had any nasty words with anybody who works for Pepsi. So, <laughs> well, see, I, I totally would. Uh, true story, because I mean, I, I'm I'm a Coke over Pepsi guy, uh, and a friend of mine. She lives in a neighborhood down the street from a Pepsi bottling plant in in Baltimore. And when I'm there, and a Pepsi truck goes by, I shake my fist at them. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> well, we we appreciate your loyalty, but you know, so, sometimes we we wonder if you know if if they're all if they're all in cahoots with each other, so you know, uh, and, and controlling the market anyway. Uh, my, my favorite thing to do at a, at a restaurant is when you order a Coke or something, and the waiter or waitress says, "Is Pepsi okay?" Just I, I like to calmly just say no, no, just calmly <laughs> no, no follow up, just this delicious awkward silence afterwards. Yeah. Oh, is Pepsi okay? No. <laughs> and then quiet and then there, after a while there's like can I get you something else <laughs> and then I oh yeah sure but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's always fun to do that's very funny so, that's very funny now, Dan let me, let me ask you something I, I always get a kick out of the uh, the grief you sometimes get on Twitter I love so, the grief the grief is great oh yeah well and, and you know it's it's truly a shame that uh, Craig is not on any kind of social media, believe it or not. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to change that, but, you know, not, not yet, not yet. Yeah, so, I, I, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a Twitter addict, I admit it. 
Okay. Now, so, so uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, so some, some of them, of course, some of the grief you get have, have uh, to do with your predictions. So uh, the things that you've gotten the most grief about, uh, what have you been, like, really right about, and what have you been, like, really wrong about? Well, well I got a lot of grief on Twitter, uh, not this past winter, but the winter before when Matt Kemp was traded. And I, I wrote, like, three pieces about how I hated that trade uh, for the Padres. And at the start of the season uh, in 2015, when he, was, when he was playing really well in April – I got all sorts of taunting about how, oh, look, look at the kid now. Look how great he's playing. And then he kind of stunk for most of the rest of the season. And so I was like, yeah. Oh, it, it was hard not to kind of say, yeah. Oh, have you seen that defense? Uh, you want to look at that war? 0. 0.6. But uh, I, I tried to trash talk too bad. I mean, I do make sarcastic remarks about things. And I do have, you know, a, a way of, of not being all warm and fuzzy. So, so I expect to get some of that. Uh, so far, going with Travis Shaw, I, I really was insistent that Travis Shaw wasn't a good option, but he really has been a good option. So I've been wrong on that. I'm going to have to eat some crow. Did you make predictions before the season for, like, the individual honors, like Cy Young? Yeah, I did. I have to uh, find them. We, we did them for, uh, for uh, ESPN, our MLB predictions, we do, you know, a thing where they just ask everybody, and mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm actually I mean, looking at it right now. I oh, I just see the teams. I did pick Kershaw. That's kind of my default pick. Like, but that, with, with, with good reason, with with good reason, he really, I I think we're 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 making a mistake if we don't we don't pause and really, you know, look at this guy in awe. I mean, he's he's remarkable. Yeah, I, I always. I'm guessing you agree. Oh yeah, I agree. I he he's been so good for such a long time that I mean, if he if he got hit by a bus tomorrow, he should probably be in the Hall of Fame under an exception. He doesn't have ten seasons, but at this point, he's been so amazing. I mean, he's essentially been Sandy Koufax for for the Dodgers. Uh, so if he got hit by a bus, he gets the Addy Joss exception and goes into the Hall of Fame. If the writers are not idiots, which I'm not saying is necessarily the case, because there's still a lot of pretty awful voters out there. Uh, mm-hmm. But no, he's an amazing picture. He's doing it so long that he's almost the default. Like, oh, it's Clayton Kershaw until I'm really convinced otherwise. I mean, it's, it's safe. I mean, I like Jake Arrieta, but he's he's had like one and a half big seasons, and Kershaw's been doing this really without like at the same level since like 2009. Uh, so uh, I love Kershaw. I, I, th- I think I picked Chris Sale for the AL Cy Young, but I'm not positive. Well, that's, that seems very safe at this point. That, let's, can we just, just talk about Arietta for a second? Because I remember he was on the Orioles, and I got to tell you, I think I saw him pitch a couple times, and I, I wasn't all that blown away. What happened? Well, his, his, his sinking stuff, took on a whole other level. I mean, he always had kind of potential in Baltimore, just not to this level. Uh, he, he, he didn't really go after batters the way he does nowadays. His command was kind of meh at, at the time. So, I mean, I liked him with the Orioles. And Zips actually, the Zips projections, I actually liked Arietta for a while in Baltimore. Uh, it kind of started liking him less after, I think, 2012 when he had uh, that ERA around six. But that, that was, he was interesting. Uh, and he's really come back to bite the Cubs. I don't, I don't want the Orioles to ever trade another picture to the Cubs because they've gotten, <laughs> they've gotten some good innings out of some pictures. I mean, uh, yeah, it's they, the, the Cubs have taken some Orioles pitching and done good things with it. And it, it it's tough to see Arietta because he would be perfect. I mean, obviously he's perfect in any team's rotation, but he would look really good in the Oriole rotation, which doesn't really have anyone who you really think ace. Uh, but well, who, who, it, it happened. The Orioles, I don't remember the trade. Who did the Orioles get back for him? They got Scott Feldman for him. And um, oh god, well, he's, he's Jewish, Jewish and he's Jew, he's a Jewish ball player. And I love that, but wow. Yeah, but he's not a good Jewish ball player. He's, kind <laughs> of a, <laughs> he's not. Well, you know, one one of the things I, I read about Arietta. 
uh, regarding his change is, uh, well, one, uh, I, I read that they said that Baltimore has a cookie-cutter approach with their pitchers. And, I thought uh, that too. So, uh, and, and, I, and then Arietta also moved, I, I think he moved to the third base side of the rubber. He moved to a different side of the rubber. And, uh, but, and also the other thing he said is, he said he started doing Pilates. He said the Pilates gave him so much more control of his body and, and, you know, and his motion, his mechanics. But, uh, but like I say, I, you know, again, so yeah, you know, it made me, it, reading, reading that about the cookie cutter approach in Baltimore actually had me shy away from Kevin Gausman. Uh, you know, in my, in my diamond mine draft, you know, I was just, nah, I don't think he's going to break out this year. I was, I was a little skeptical. So. Yeah, the Orioles, they've, they've been disappointed by a lot of their pitching prospects. Uh, and they do have a reputation for not doing a really good job with them. Uh, I mean, obviously Dylan Bundy was injured, but, and, and Tillman has been good this year, and, and Gosman's been fine. But, it, a lot of these pictures never really panned out. I mean, you look at Zach Britton, he's a really good closer. But if he were an ace starter, that'd be even better than if he, that he's a closer. Uh, you look at, uh, like Brian Mattis, he never really became more than a good lefty reliever. Uh, so it is disappointing how some of the Orioles prospects have developed because it's, well, it's, it's hard to get pitching. And what well, do you look at Buck yeah. on, about, do you point your finger at Buck on something like that? I don't know if it's Buck. I think a lot of these things happen lower in the minors. Uh, I like Buck. He, I mean, he has his ups and downs. He has his blind spots. Uh, like, for some reason, they really don't want to give uh, Hyun Soo Kim uh, an extended shot uh, because they're in love with Joey Rickard. Uh, that's, that's probably more on Buck. Uh, but it, it's hard to place the blame on the manager because, I mean, Buck isn't developing pictures. That's not really his role. Mm-hmm. So, and... Uh, what well, I was oh so now let me so besides you know the guys that have come out of nowhere uh you know what have uh been some of your biggest drop offs this year so far hmm. like uh particularly, the side chase Headley. Particularly, yeah but Headley Headley missed quite a bit no I I mean um, let's well, talk Justin, about guys for that, sure. Okay, yeah, I was about to say, guys that more closer to the All-Star category. Yeah, Justin Upton's drop-off has just been terrible. He looks a mess out there. He looks like he's never swung a bat before. Like, maybe he for is like, are you sure you're still hitting right-handed? Maybe you should hit left-handed just to see. Just, just to see, because right-handed isn't working. Maybe you should see if you're actually left-handed. Uh, because he's been a mess this year, and he's been a pretty... He's never been a superstar. Upton's never had that big MVP type season, but he's always been a really good hitter, always above average. He's not old; he's still in his twenties, but he's just missing everything this year. I mean, he's going to strike out more than two hundred times without anything to show for it. I, I don't know what's going on with that, and I'm sure that's kind of like the way his brother went south. Yeah, he, well, his brother's having a better year than him now. It, yes, it's, it's scary. Funny. That's that's very scary. Yeah, I mean, well, he's, I still think of him as B.J. Upton, uh, but, 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 but Melvin Upton, he's having a really good year so far in 2016, and he was actually pretty good last year, which, which is kind of weird that in the end, he's been better Upton. Maybe Justin should change his first name. Yeah, that, that works. Uh, um, <laughs> it worked for his brother. <laughs> yeah, well, since he's not using Bossman Jr. anymore, then he can be Bossman Jr., how about uh, someone like Dave, how, how about someone like David Wright? Well, David Wright, he he was always kind of a risk simply because of his back issues, but he he he's been fine. His his average hasn't been there. Um, I mean, he's striking out more than he usually does, uh, but that's 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 kind of natural as as a player gets older. Uh, he can't really his. I don't think his bat speed is what it was five years ago. Uh, but I don't, I don't think he's a problem. Uh, I mean, his defense has been kind of bleh, 
But I really, there's not much you can do about that. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, it, I could. I yeah, the defense has do. been an issue, and you, and, and you kind of. It's not the most shocking thing for a guy with with back issues. Yeah, I just you know, if, it, if, it, if, it's a, if it's a different ball player, he's gone. I mean, um, I actually saw a few innings of a ball game during the week last week, and he was pretty much almost underhanding the ball. I mean, his throws from third were painful. Um, yeah, well, I mean, when your back hurts, throwing can be a, a big problem because I mean that's all. Yeah, well, pretty much when your back hurts, you're not playing baseball, and I, I just don't see him. I, you know, I. I listened to WFAN on the way to the train station in the morning, and you know, here in New York, it's it's a pretty hot topic. You know, what, what's gonna what's gonna be what's gonna come, become of him? And I I don't I don't see how he lasts the season. I mean, I'm not. I, mean, I, him. I don't watch sure. that much. I think I think the Mets are probably privately hoping that. You know he he won't be able to con- at some point he won't be able to continue it and the insurance will kick in to pay the rest of his contract. Yeah, because he I is mean, signed for a while and that is a problem. And it's not like yeah. I mean they have Duda on the team. It's not like they can just simply move him to first. Uh, it, right. it, it it's not really an option because maybe he can handle first. Players with back problems have survived there, but it's 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 not a great situation. Um, I, I mean the team needs him to to play well. Uh, because really, that's that's the that's the Mets' biggest issue right now is the team defense, and right at third is not helping. Uh, but it, it's scary to think that he signed for another four and three quarters years. Yes, uh, for about for like twenty million dollars a year or eighteen million dollars a year. Yeah, it, it drops at the end, but it's still a good sum of money, uh, especially because the Mets are not the spenders that the Yankees are for for various for very obvious reasons. I smell yeah. a buyout, guys. I don't see that happening. I mean, there's no way. There's no way in the world he's surviving. I mean, there's no way in the world he's playing another four and three quarters seasons. There's no way. But, you know, yeah. speaking, speaking, speaking of the money in the Mets, speaking of money and the Mets and players walking away, uh, Dan, wh- what's your take on? Uh, oh God, Padilla. Uh, Padilla. Yes. What, what's your take on that? Well, he he was pretty awful last year. Uh, it was kind of an awkward situation because the team probably should have benched him and just given the job to Conforto, but Absolutely. they didn't. And, and it's, it's hard for a player. It's not like he didn't have money saved up. Uh, now, there was some issue that the Mets did pay some for his buyout, but I don't remember the exact details. It, yeah, I, I heard it was like just a couple million. So you yeah. you you. you, you do you believe that him walking away from the game uh, the way he did was strictly uh, a personal decision based on the fact that he's not performing, et cetera, et cetera? Because you know, other, other people had suggested that there might have, you know, there might have been other things involved, and he was. It's, it's, hard, it's hard space. to get into a guy's head like that. Uh, really, right. if if he was happy leaving the game, and the Mets should have been happy not paying him twelve and a half million. To play like he did in 2015 again. Uh, as long as it, I mean, it worked out for both sides in the end, probably. So it's probably not worth, you know, being too concerned about it. Uh, and you right. know, different different players have different feelings about baseball. Uh, a lot of times, fans think that all players are like baseball nuts, but they're really not. Uh, like I think about Adam Dunn. Uh, the the thing about Adam Dunn is he he probably didn't really like baseball all that much. It was just that he was good at baseball. Uh, he, he, he would have much preferred at the end to, you know, be hunting and fishing. So when the time came that his skills dropped off, uh, he wasn't getting the same offers, it, it made sense for him to walk away from the game and, and call, it, call it quits. I mean, he was still fairly young for retirement. And so there's, there's a lot of varying around players. Uh, some, of course, are baseball nuts, and, and some aren't. And it's always hard to tell. I, I, I try not to read too much into it because people always forget that, that it, it's still a job. It's a really good job. It's a high-paying job. You get a lot of fame and fortune, uh, but it, it's still a job. And there's very few jobs where you're into it every single day. Uh, I know. I mean, I love being a baseball writer, but there's always an occasional day where I think I don't really feel like writing something today, uh, but I do anyway because that's the job. Because uh, I was in a position he could walk away, and he did. 
Uh, and I guess at the end of it, it, it worked out. Okay. Uh, we've reached the end of our show. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm glad you came on, and uh, I'm happy to hear that you will come back as a reoccurring guest every four or five weeks to give us an update through the season and discuss the happenings of the season. Uh, and oh, and I, and I guess I'll, I will probably be seeing you in about a month at uh, the Staten Island Yankee Stadium. Oh, are you are, are you coming to the game? I will. Even if if I even if I work, I will come. You know, I'll get there late. I will come to the game, uh, and you should uh, get in touch with me. So there's an yeah, well, excellent excellent we're, we're restaurant. So we'll get stuck. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but just yeah, to, I still I still don't know what our schedule is and everything, but we'll, we'll figure something out. Excellent, um, excellent. And just so you know, there is a superb restaurant that will certainly impress your companion right across the street from the Staten Island Yankees ballpark. It's on a right on, right across the street on a little side street called Skyler Street. The name of the restaurant is Beso, and I can tell you that I have had the best skirt steak I ever had there. Oh, I love so, skirt steak. I'll, oh, then you will have to go there. So I will leave you with that. Uh, thank you. See, when I, whenever I'm on. in New York, I always have the places that I know I have to go to. Like, I always have to make sure to go up to Barney Greengrass. Uh, uh, so, now you're talking. Yeah, I love, I love sturgeon and caviar. Ugh. Oh, that's true. Uh, uh, okay, that. so Get some white I, I'm just curious. So – because uh, we, you know, obviously, we, you know, a lot of uh, people that listen are, are from New York and, and have New York roots, you know, because, I mean, we're talking about eight out of ten people. So uh, besides uh, Barney Greengrass, when you are in New York, what are your favorite places? Like, where do you say, oh, I, I really got to try to get to this place, or I got to try to get to that place? Well, Barney, Barney Greengrass is, of course, my favorite. Uh, I used I used to go to uh, Wally Dufresne's restaurant, but that that that's kind of closed now. That was always a fun place to go, kind of an upscale thing. Uh, I, I I like going to um, uh, Pearl Diner down in the uh, financial district. Uh, oh, I used to work, I, I, I I used to go there all the time. I, I, I yeah, they had they have they have like this really awesome like amazing meatloaf, and I know it's yeah. weird to to say meatloaf, but it was amazing meatloaf. It was the best meatloaf I've ever had. It's um, a good diner. It's still there. Yeah, I used to, um, I mean, I used to be in New York more often, uh, simply because ESPN, the magazine, they had offices in Chelsea. Uh, the, but they, re- they relocated that all to, to the main campus in, in Bristol. Uh, so there's not that same opportunity. Because my, gran- my grandfather's from New York. Uh, I mean, he was, he was a little... New York lawyer, little Jewish lawyer that grew up. He he knew Hank Greenberg growing up. Uh, played soccer. Oh, so he was from the kid. Bronx. So he was, yeah. So he was from the Bronx. Okay. Yeah. 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 So there there are family usually, ties to New York. Usually, whenever I ask uh, you know a ball player where you know where they eat in New York, they or or someone connected to the game that travels to New York. They they always mention Katz's delicatessen. Uh, yeah, that the pastrami. Oh, now I'm thinking yeah, of pastrami. What did yeah. you do to me? <laughs> we had uh, we had we had Ron Bloomberg on a couple of weeks ago, and he 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 just kept talking about the stage deli, the stage. Deli. They named a sandwich after him. He was, just couldn't get off the stage deli. Oh well, you got you got to go anywhere to uh, name a sandwich after you. But I mean, the cat a cat it's like the the pastrami. That, 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 um. I mean, they get like a pound of pastrami on. And, oh. it's, pastrami <laughs> oh. is one of those things you, it's hard to get outside of New York, like really right. well. It doesn't have that same flavor. Like you can't go to. I'm in Ohio. If I go to a deli, if I go to the, the deli at the grocery store, their pastrami is not pastrami. It's just, no. it's just, it's just, it's just kind of ham that they've thrown <laughs> some crap on. They've just brined some ham. Like that's that's not pastrami. Uh, that's funny. Oh. Uh, so, well, I look forward to speaking okay. to you in a few weeks, and uh, take care. And uh, Always fun, guys. Yeah, thank you very, very okay. much for your time. Okay, we have a good yeah, one. Dan, thank you. Have a good night. You do the same. Bye, guys.
Bye-bye.